So, uh, yeah, two years ago, I was right here. Glad to be back. How many were here two years ago at the very first Low Carb Down Under conference? Wow, a lot of newbies. Check that out. Really proud of what's happened here in Australia. This is my quick talk, so you're going to hear me speak. Uh, you're going to hear a southern United States guy talking fast, so we'll do our best. So, yes, as Rod said, I am the uh, owner of Living La Vida Low Carb blog. I started that right after my Atkins weight loss success in 2004. Currently gets about a quarter million readers a month. And then uh, this is the show that, uh, how many people listen to the Living La Vida Low Carb show? Thank you guys. And if you're not, you're going to after today, right? <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually at 894 as far as episodes now. So almost at 900. I tell people I'm gonna hit 999 and just stop. <laughs> nah, you know better than that. So, no, I, I'm very passionate about this topic, and low carb has really taken off around the world, and one of the things that Rod wanted me to do was talk about what's going on in the world of low carb. Now, on Fridays in America, I also do a podcast called Low Carb Conversations with Jimmy Moore, dietitian Cassie and Friends, who listens to that. All right, that's cool. So what we do on this show, um, and I've had several Aussies on this show, including Crystal Fieldhouse has been on there, um, and different other ones. So what we do is we take health headlines and we say, okay, let's look at it through the prism of LCHF because they don't always match up with LCHF, do they? So that's what we're going to do a little bit here today is kind of see what's been going on in the world of low carb here in recent months. So that's lowcarbconversations.com. You want to check it out. So let's look at fat. How many love fat? Booyah. Yeah, we all love fat. Well, look at the front cover of Time Magazine just from June of this year. Now, this was huge. Now, you would think this is an American, major American publication. It would make a big splash and people would just hail it. No, it just doesn't get the play that you would think it would. But it's out there now, especially juxtaposed to this man, and the unhappy egg face that everybody's very familiar with from the 1980s, this is progress. This shows that fat is where it's at, is what I like to say. And people are realizing that they've been lied to, perhaps, about saturated fat. And then in the British Medical Journal, we have uh, Dr. Mahaltra had this saturated fat's not the major issue. The Annals of Internal Medicine also has a very prestigious um, study that came out, Association of Dietary Circulating and Supplement Fatty Acids with Coronary Risk, and they found, they looked at all the data, there's a whole lot of nothing there when it comes to saturated fat and coronary disease, and later on I'm going to talk about a little bit about cholesterol in my later talk. And then we get headlines like this one, saturated fat isn't bad for your heart, major study questions decades of dietary advice. Would you have believed five years ago you'd see headlines like that? I wouldn't have, and when I first started uh, kind of blogging even before my podcast, I would do a survey every year of my readers. This was back in 2006, seven, something like that. And uh, I would ask them, how long do you think it's gonna take before the low-carb message becomes mainstream? So the first year, it was like, never. This was like, sorry about that, seven years ago, never. It's just never gonna happen, very pessimistic. Then the next year, I asked the same question. Uh, 50 to 75 years. So it was a little bit of, you know, conciliatory language. Then the next year, well, I could see it happening in 30 years. And then the next year, oh, it's coming like 15 to 20 years. It's here. We don't have to wait anymore. We're seeing the headlines. And you guys are a big part of that, having uh, these conferences and doing this today. Here's another one. Everyone was wrong. Saturated fat is good for you. And there was a key uh, pull quote in there. In the last 30 years, Americans have lowered their fat consumption by 10%, while obesity has doubled. Yeah, you think? Michael Mosley over in the UK, should people be eating more fat? So we're seeing all these really great headlines on behalf of fat. And this is good, right? You can say yes, it's not that early. <laughs> so let's look at the news front over in New Zealand. Uh, saturated fats, health benefits under scrutiny, so that's Dr. Karen Zinn and, and Grant Schofield over there. They're doing a great job of spreading the LCF message there on television. And, and in fact, uh, I just came from New Zealand 
and Karen is under fire from the dietitian society over there, they don't like that she's talking about LCHF, but she's like, look, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where the science is wrong. And they can't do it because they know it's true. So there's the dietitians getting on her. They write this whole response of how irresponsible it is that she's talking about low carb, high fat. And of course they cling strongly to their, their beliefs. Here in Australia, you had this catalyst program, which we'll uh, talk about the new one here in a second, but heart of the matter on cholesterol was last year. And then you had uh, newspaper headlines like this one where they urged ABC to pull it. And guess what they did? You know, they pulled it. But there's a funny thing about the internet. Once it's on, it's always on. Go to YouTube. Go to Vimeo, type in the Heart of the Matter Dietary Villains and the Heart of the Matter of the Cholesterol Drug War, and you can still watch these banned videos. Have fun. So speaking of the catalyst, you guys just had this air in your country. I just watched it yesterday morning. Amazing. Low-carb diet, fat, or fiction. Dr. Marianne Damasi did, did a great job once again. This is huge, you guys. I, we have not seen this kind of major media penetration in the United States at all. And so it's really encouraging to see a country like yours really embracing this message because then we in the United States and other parts of the world can say, look what they're doing in Australia. So you guys are actually leading the way and we're very grateful for that. In fact, your headline, might have been one of you guys sent me this on Twitter, we must curb carbs. Did you see this in the newspaper? It was amazing. In the Herald Sun. So how about books in the last few years? Anybody gotten wheat belly and grain brain? Raise your hand. Yeah. So it's uh, by a couple of, whoop, did I turn it off? By a couple of uh, interesting people. That's Dr. William Davis. He's a regular on our low carb cruise. Dr. David Perlmutter, a neurologist uh, that really is into this. And these guys have both hit the number one bestseller on New York Times bestsellers list. Amazing. And then we have The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz. Anybody have this book? You have to get this book, right? I meant to tell you, you should have ordered some of these books because this is a great, great book. You want to learn about the history of how we got it all wrong about fat? Nina's book is Da Bomb. So how about TV and film? So do you guys see Dr. Oz here? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so he's a very prominent health personality. I'm not, I, I hate to even call him an expert, but he's a health personality in America. And you might remember a few years back, he had Gary Taubes on talking about good calories, bad calories, and totally blasted the low carb message. Well, in the last couple of years, he's changed. And he's having a lot of stories on carbohydrates and raising blood sugar. Well, welcome to the fray, Dr. Oz. In fact, Dr. Perlmutter was just on his show last year and he was talking about grain brain and he said, here's the food you want to feed your brain with. Butter is back, Dr. Perlmutter said, and the whole audience just thunderously applauded. Whoa, that's huge. How about South Park? Do you guys get to see South Park here? Yeah? Okay, cool. Did you see gluten-free Ebola? This aired on October 1st this year, and it, it's hilarious, and some really vulgar stuff that I won't talk about here on video, but really horrible stuff, but also some really good stuff, and here's the good stuff. Gluten breakdown, so it kind of talks about the impact of wheat and proteins and wheat and the gliadin and blah, blah, blah. Then they turn the pyramid upside down. This is what we need to do. That was an incredible image on the screen. And then at the very end of the show, they all got served a steak with a stick of butter on top. <laughs> Don't you know Jimmy Moore loved that show? <laughs> so as Rod told you, Serial Killers has come out. This is a really fantastic documentary if you've not seen it yet. Um, they're actually working on a sequel, which you'll hear about very soon. And then Carb Loaded is one that just released. Anybody seen Carb Loaded? Yeah, fantastic. I, I had a quick little cameo about cholesterol in there, uh, but really, really awesome, well done uh, documentary. 
And then uh, Fed Up has been a big one in America as well. Have you guys seen Fed Up? Uh huh. Okay, a few of you. So we're seeing some really cool documentaries coming. Now, Rod always asks when I, when I uh, talk to him, what's going on with Tom Naughton? Anybody seen Fathead, the movie? Okay, cool. So uh, Rod's always like, so what's going on? Is he working on anything new? I know people have been begging him to do a, another movie after Fathead because it was so good. Well, it just so happens that he's taking his daughters, that's his daughter, Sarah, and they're doing the Fathead Fit Kids Club. You've seen any of those videos on YouTube. They do a really good job. But coming in 2015, he's got a brand new children's book and companion DVD. So look for that. How about the cultural impact? So US News and World Report publishes this Google's most popular diets from 2013. So these are the most popular Google search terms for diet last year. And of course, paleo is number one. How many of you kind of subscribe to a paleo lifestyle? Okay. It's just basically real food. And LCHF can definitely fit within that. But look down at number five. Hmm, ketogenic. Yeah, it's catching on. How about the podcast? These are the top podcasts right now in the nutrition and fitness category. Nine of the top 12 are low-carb, paleo, primal, real food friendly. That's mine at number nine. How about in the sports and athletics? So the LA Lakers, the team doctor is Dr. Kate Shanahan. She put them on a low-carb, high-fat diet to help extend some of their careers. Kobe Bryant's still playing today, uh, and he credits eating this way for extending his career. LeBron James, probably the most famous athlete in the world, is now, or went on a very low sugar, carb, dairy diet for a couple of months this summer, very famously. And see, that's the kind of thing that I think is gonna penetrate the culture because there might be some LeBron fan out there that goes, a little kid, and goes, hey, if LeBron does that to get healthy and be athletic, maybe I need to do it too. Very encouraging to see that. Then ultra marathoner Timothy Allen Olsen was on my podcast a couple of years ago. Uh, does ultra marathons, and uh, Steve Finney is actually going to talk probably an extent, uh, or talk pretty extensively about that back in August. But he ran the Western States 100 race, which is a very uh, grueling race. He beat the world record by 20 minutes in a ketogenic state. And then, of course, here in August, you saw Peter Bruckner from the Australian cricket team. It's funny, I said Australian cricket team over in New Zealand the other day, and they were, boo! I said, dude, this is gonna play well the next nine times I do this talk, so. But he's using LCHF with the cricket players uh, with great success, as we saw in the Catalyst program the other night, too. How about in the business realm? So Coca-Cola is losing market share. Boo freaking who is all I got to say. <laughs> Back in the day that I drank 16 cans of Coca-Cola and didn't think twice about it, they were happy to have customers like me. But now I drink zero cans of Coca-Cola and they're hurting. And that's a great thing. Now, I think you're going to see a lot more kind of diet drinks and maybe waters and things from them, but they know high fructose corn syrup filled sugary sodas are going out. McDonald's, good old Mickey D's, is also losing money. Wah, freaking wah. <laughs> you know, I mean, these companies, they fail to see the trends. They don't see that what they're serving, and I'm not blaming them for obesity and health problems because they will say they're just meeting a need, but they do have very salacious marketing, especially to children, and, and it's stuck. But now parents are getting wise and they're realizing that's probably not such a good idea anymore. So what about in the science realm? So you, uh, there was a pretty major story on Gary Taubes and Dr. Peter Atia and their new C. And Nutrition Science Initiative, they are working on some pretty bold studies right now. And what's interesting is they didn't go to Steve Finney, Jeff Folick, my co-author, Dr. Eric Westman, who are all very world-renowned low-carbohydrate researchers. They said, you know what, we want to find people that will be antagonistic towards this message. 
What better way to, to speak the message loud and clear than to have the very people that don't believe in it then show the evidence that it's true? So I can kind of get what they're, where they're going there, and it's, it's kind of an interesting way, and we'll be seeing more of that in the coming years. And then we're seeing headlines like this one. High-fat diet may postpone aging. Also, uh, possible treatment options for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These are things we talked about in Keto Clarity, but now they're hitting mainstream. That science is getting out there. And it makes you wonder, how many people are seeing headlines like that juxtaposed to the meat and saturated fat will give you cancer kind of headlines, you know, people's heads start to spin. But it, at some point, they have to come to a decision of, I believe this, I discard this. This is a good one. So how about around the world? What's going on with LCHF? Of course, in Sweden, they are the first uh, nation to really reject low-fat diets and they're using low carb in, um, in practice there in the government because of these two people, Dr. Andreas Einfeldt and Dr. Annika Dahlquist. Now, Dr. Dahlquist was actually sued. Anybody know the story about Dr. Dahlquist? Yes, yeah, so she was actually sued by two nanny dietitians that thought she could not use low carb, high fat diets with diabetics. No diabetics need that. So, but, but she was like, bring it on. I've got all the, the evidence that shows I'm not harming them. So she got sued and actually went all the way to the highest levels of government. And they looked at the evidence and they said, low carb diets are by the evidence. That, that there's no evidence that shows they're harmful. So in the lack of evidence of them being harmful, they now have to acknowledge low carb diets are good. So it's pretty cool. And then Dr. Einfeldt's uh, been a really major champion, dietdoctor.com is his website in English, if you want to read that. Of course, in South Africa, you guys saw him in August. Uh, Professor Tim Noakes is doing a really great job out there. In fact, they are now organizing their very first low-carb conference. It's coming in February. I was invited to come out there. Yes, I love international trips, apparently. <laughs> But I was invited to speak there. Uh, Dr. Finney, I think, is going to be there as well. My co-author, Dr. Eric Westman, and many others pushing this message of LCHF. And he's bold. You saw him here in August. I mean, Dr. Noakes does not play. He's like, bring it on. I got the evidence, people. Over in New Zealand, we have Grant Schofield and Dr. Karen Zinn doing a really great job of promoting this very majorly in the media as well. And then, of course, how can I not mention Dr. Rod Taylor, Z. Shanna Rain, and Jamie Hayes doing a really good job here in Australia and many others uh, of pushing this message and making it mainstream. So you still may see headlines like this, right? But my encouragement to you is this. Keep calm. Be encouraged. You are your own best health advocate. You are the one in your sphere of influence that can impact those people. I just heard from so many people when I was signing books, so many people saying, you know, hey, I've told my brother, my sister, my friend, coworker, keep doing that. Yeah, I have a pretty popular podcast and blog, but I can only reach so many people. It, I, I like to kind of make an analogy of uh, my podcast is like going to church and you kind of learn and then you go out and you share it with the world. So I encourage you to keep doing that and, and get the message out there. Thank you very much.